Park from Norman, Harry McGrath from Camden Street in Dublin. The two men who just said was at a meeting above in into the Count's house when they were attacked. Shots was fired first by the branch. Thomas Hart was wounded. Peter Sullivan was wounded. Harry McGrath, the veteran of 1916, went back to assist to assist um, Hart, Thomas Hart, and the two of them were arrested. Harry McGrath, the veteran of 1916, and being arrested, they were brought in front of a military court here in Harbour Hill. They were sentenced to be executed by fighting squad. There was a heavy appeal made for the save the lives of the two men, Joe Clark, Julia Brennan's, and others went out to Black Rock, the devil here's house, and spoke to Jenny about McGraw. Jenny did speak to them, but the two executions were carried out in Mount Joy Jail, the two of them, in Mount Joy Jail, in 1940. While Tony Darcy and Sean McNeela were on hunger strike, they were led back to their name. When they were on hunger strike, just a little bit down, I was a prisoner myself in Mount Joy Jail, just a little bit down from the sick wing, there was a wall there where Rory O'Connor, Lee Mallows, Lee Plot and John McKelvey and others were put against that wall and shot. The execution of McGrath and Hart, the blanket was put down on the ground, the sleepers were standing up, they were put in front of it, the two men, and shot. During the hunger strike that was in the prison at the time, The sound of the Lee Enfields going off, the smoke going up into the sick wing, and the smell of the sulfur going up into the sick wing by a man were dying on hunger strike. By a man were dying on hunger strike. Harry McGrath and Thomas Hart, whose bodies were buried in Mount Joy Jail. I'll come later to speak about that. That. We still, in 1940, Barney Casey was interned in the Court of Concentration Camp, along with hundreds of others, and treated below it. When the military red caps came into the concentration camp, and coming into the military concentration camp, they opened fire, shooting Barney Casey dead. Shooting him dead. Um, no prosecution was allowed in the Feast of Army murders who carried out that brutal murder. And it was murder because those men were unarmed. Casey was shot dead. Two others were slightly wounded in it. And no inquiry allowed into it. It was just that it was a time of war and all of this effect, and that was put down. But not with that. 1941, being to 1941, when Richard Crossan, or Richard Goss, from Dundalk, yes, he fired. He fired hard and hit nobody. He was arrested, brought in front of the military court here in Harbour Hill. He stayed in the military court in Harbour Hill. Sentenced to be dead because he fired and anyone carrying a revolver or anything that effect at the time 
her own sentence of death. And he was executed below on Port Lee's prison. Buried in prison soil. Come back to that later. Leads me to 1942, <coughs> when George Plant of Tipperary, the one who robbed the banks, Rafina Foyle, and the proceeds of that robberies, was there to help Fina Foyle, which he was very associated at the time with a liking of Fina Foyle. Now, he, he, was accused of shooting Derricks. There was five arrested. Three didn't stand trial, but they were interned. And the other two, George Plant and Joe O'Connor, were tried for it. Joe O'Connor was acquitted. Was acquitted. George Plant was found guilty by the Kangaroo Court, the Eastern Army Military Kangaroo Court, and sentenced to death. And was brought to the Port Lee's prison, where he was to be executed in Harbour Hill, and there was a coffin in that glory. Because a Eastern Army soldier spoke about that, that there was a coffin in there covered over. Plant was put up into the back of the lorry, brought down the park leash. Where there, a 40 squad awaited him. There was no period of time that he'd have a few hours to, that there'd be an appeal and not that effect. And none of that was allowed into it. None of that was allowed into it. He was just taken down off the lorry. The blanket on the ground to soak his blood. The sleepers put up, and when the sleepers were put up, he um, he was put facing the is and shot dead, buried in prison soil, buried in prison soil. What us Neil from Kerry? was also faced that same police and army court above here in Harbour Hill and he was found guilty. No witnesses were allowed into those courts. No witnesses around him was allowed into those courts. And he was found guilty of something that others was involved in. He was there. <coughs> what did he do the shooting? It was proven after that he didn't do the shooting. Still he was sentenced to death in that prison above here. Brought down to Mountjoy Jail, where McGraw and Hart, in the men of the Civil War, at that same spot that the sleeper stood up and put in front of the sleeper, put in front of the sleeper and shot dead. Buried in prison soil. Buried in prison soil. Now, Tommy Williams above Belfast, there's no harm to say it now because the man who done the shooting was a great friend of mine. And he done the shooting. Tommy Williams didn't do the shooting. And that was Joe Cahill done the shooting. And shot the nigger to death. And one of the RUC, one of the B specials, um, they were arrested. And Thomas Hart, who was the leader at the time, 18 years of age, of that section, was condemned to death and was brought over. An English man was brought over to hang him, to hang him in 1942. Very good prison soil. A short few years ago, we got his remains back out of it and buried him in Midtown Cemetery. 
I was there. I was there. And all those funerals of the men who was executed in the 40s. I was the only youngster when all their bodies were released. When all their bodies were released. And I was there at them. When Tommy Williams. Paddy Dermody, 1942, was at a wedding in Cavan at his sister's funeral. Paddy, um, Paddy Dermody, they were attacked, attacked by the branch which the name had changed to the special branch. They did open fire. Killing Paddy Dermody, Walsh, who was the superintendent in charge of that raid. Killing Paddy Dermody. Wounded little Harry and Neil and uh, Harry, I don't know, in the, Harry White in the back. Harry escaped. Later, Harry was in Belfast when he was arrested and brought down to Dublin on my bride severely stood against the court severely stood against the court insulting the judges in a way and little Harry White was charged with the murder with murder but that was acquitted and he was sentenced to 14 years of imprisonment. Little Harry White. Um, he was in Port Leash, along with Jack McCorton, that's Thomas McCorton, the son of the great man of Cork. So Jack McCorton, former chief of staff of the IRA, Holly McLogan, and all those who were in Port Leash prison at that period of time. Come back to speak. Of 1943, Jackie Griffith from Ring's End in Dublin was coming up from Ring's End when he got into Hollett Street. Where there, a branch with a Thompson machine gun opened fire on an unarmed man, 20 years of age, an unarmed man. 20 years of age, and shot him brutally dead. Those who was looking out of Hollis Street Hospital at the time, at the time, one of those witnesses <coughs> and other people that seen what there was, was put down that it was an emergency act at the time in the 40s. No prosecution was, was allowed into it. Gantley, was the one who done the shooting. Later, some gangsters here in Dublin, Lavery and Nolan and others, at the Hamelin factory below there, and they were attacked. They were, what were they doing? There was nothing to do with the IRA as well. They had rock banks and stuff like that, Lavery and Nolan. Um, Gantley, the superintendent who led the raid, who had shot Griffith dead. He led the raid at the Hamelin factory, and one of his own shot him dead. One of his own policemen shot him dead. And it was a good job, but that was justice, however else that that is. But in the lovely and old and later arrested and got imprisonment, I knew both of those later years, I knew both of them. It was in, in around 1948 or something like that, is when that raid took one day the Robin stuck here in Dublin. Um, was shot dead, man, excuse me. They were shot dead. I was Jackie Griffith. Charlie Curtis, OC, 
of the Kenny Brigade, Adjutant General of the IRA also. There was a, a sergeant of the police who shot. Cadence was arrested afterwards. The flimsy evidence that there was that his fingerprints were found on the crossbar of a bike, which no civilian court would have accepted that in whatsoever. No civilian court would have accepted that in whatsoever. And he was condemned to death by hanging. He was hanged in 1940, 1944 in Mountjoy Jail. The same English hangman that hanged Barrett and McCormack in 1942, here point. That same hangman's family was on the execution of Kevin Barry and yours. From 1920. Here point, he brought over in 1944 to hang the Condon General of the IRA, Charlie Hedges. That same hangman that hanged Barnes and McCormick, Tommy Williams, and then they put the rope around that man's neck and hang him. He was buried in prison soil in Mount Joy Jail, where he was hanged. In 1946, to Sean McCaughey in Tyrone. Sean McCaughey, along with Charlie McLeod, Liam Rice, Peter Flynn, who did the car, arrested Stephen Hayes about Belfast and brought him to Dublin to McCown's house, where there he was court martialed by the Irish Republican Army, known as the IRA. He was court-martialed, and they got the statement over him. A part of that statement says, that when Stephen Hayes met with Dr. Ryan and Fiona Foyle in the Gresham Hotel, he told them that Sean Russell was dead in the port of Gibraltar. And that is a part of the confession. Now, other stories related to the death of Sean Russell, that Sean Russell's body was washed up in the port, some port and another, and that he was seen here in Dublin, disappeared in Aberbach. Then the other story, whether it's true or not, I don't know, that he died on a German U-boat. I don't know how true that story is, I don't know. As I don't know. But relating back to George Plant, relating back to George Plant, George Plant had been fired twice in civilian court and was acquitted twice in that civilian court. And being acquitted in that civilian court, he was rearrested under the orders, and I found this out that De Valera willfully wanted George Plant out of the way because he had so much on Fina Fire. On De Valera's own want that George Plant will be executed. And George Plant was executed. Now, it wasn't to 1948 that the remains of those men were released out of it. I was in the Fina Erlen at that time. And the bodies getting brought from Port Leash to Mount Joy and other places to the various counties to be buried. Now, the bodies would have been still there if Fina Foyle had remained as a government. But they were. Lost the elections with, uh, to, uh, to Fine Gael, 
and the public and others who formed the government, who did form a government, and in forming that government, their bodies was released. Dick Spring, or um, Dan Spring of Kerry, the father of that disease, I call it a disease, Dick Spring. Um, his father was the one who demanded that the bodies would be released. But the bodies was going to be released anyway. And I am very proud to say, as a youngster, that I was on the funerals of those men and my feet are in uniform. And the harassment that there was standing on pots and stuff like that of vermin's gum, known as the special branch. There's always one amongst an audience, and they always dress them, which I address them on platforms and to their faces as vermin's scum, which is agents. And that's where I address them as. And I remember going along with the lay, Eamon Mockamash, Eamon Thomas, who's always known as Eamon Thomas. John Jimmy Garrow of Leitham, years after, when I became a member of the Irish Republican Army in 1952. And we went to visit the graves of those men that had been murdered in the forties. Down to Tony Darcy to the edge of the Atlantic, down to Hepford. Galway, across the MacNeil and Ballina, up beside Ballina, down outside of Ballina. And there were other places to wear, down the feathers in Tipperary, the George plant, Paddy McGraw, here in Dublin, Thomas Hart, here in Dublin, Thomas Hart, the Bellingham, the Milltown Cemetery. And I remember distinctly when Sean McCaughey's the remains came from Hartley's prison in 1946. His remains came up, and a multitude of people who marched, who marched up all the way. And when we got up to the bridge, old Patchian, they don't try that Patchian, he drew an old 45 revolver and stood on the path. And four three shots. But it was only a bone error in his respects to Sean McCaughey's remains. And Sean McCaughey was sent up to Belfast, to be buried in Belfast after dying in Hartley's prison. Thomas Hart was sent up to where he came from in the north with feast and enemy bullets in him. Bullets that was accepted or bought off the British and the Senegal to it. To it. To it. I notice on this little team that there are 22 names. That word 22 is an awful burden to Republicans because in 22 that the compromise was set up and accepted. Is it in 22 that the Free Staters murdered Republicans at will to maintain a British presence here in Ireland and they done that with a very cruel rotten manner. And I notice on the headstone in Glass Neville Cemetery, when I was one of them in 1984, to put that stone up to our beloved hunger strikers. To our beloved hunger strikers. And the first of that was a Thomas Hirsch from Kerry. The man who left us with that. Lord, let me carry your cross for Ireland. 
خمس عشر دايت In the Mala Hospital at Bean on Hunger Strike and Memo Joy when he burst his gullet rushing to the Mala Hospital where he died after five days in the Mala Hospital. The Mustache. Hence Mike Sweeney, the mayor of Cork, who died in Brixton Prison. Who died in Brixton Prison. And he sent for his sister Mary and he told her that he would die for the Republic. That he would die for the Republic. Fitzgerald and Murphy, at that same period, 1920, died on that motorcycle. And Fitzgerald went to die longer than Max Sweeney on the motorcycle. And then we come to the Civil War period, and Joseph Whitty of Whitewood, you know that from Whitewood, Andy Sullivan, Andy Sullivan, and then this body, then Tilton Cork. Well, let die another free state government, another an Irish free state government. Well, let die another Irish state And that had gone. And we came to 1940, and Tony Darcy and Sean McNeela, two prisoners of war, well, let die. And Brickens up here in under the hands of Fianna Fáil. Sean McCahy in 1946 was let die in under the Eamon de Valera government. Pardon me for a moment, please. Was let die and sent back to the north to be buried. 1974, Yom in an English prison was murdered in an English prison because he kept telling them, oh yes, we're giving you your rights. And he moved them prison to prison and each prison he went to, you're getting no rights. And McGohan died in an English prison in 19... 84, yeah, in 1970, 1974. And I remember negotiating here with others negotiated in London to get his remains back. And we got his remains back and brought him to Adam and Eve's church below down there where we went them overnight the following day. We brought him down to Ballina to bury him. 1975, the last murder committed by the Feast of the Army was young Tommy Smith on Patrick's Day, 1985, as you say. 1985. 1986, that beautiful friend, Frank Steig, that lovely round face from Frank Steig. I knew Frank Steig. And Frank Steig, in an English prison, decided that he would die rather than accept the conditions. And he died on the Holy Spirit. Remains was made to bring back his remains back here 